Good morning, and welcome to Santa Catalina Parish and our Eucharistic celebration for the sixth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Father Pat Grile. He is assisted by, at the altar by Deacon Flavio Sanchez. Father Lamar will be hearing confessions in the parking lots sun, Saturday mornings from 9 to 11 a.m. Drive up with the driver's side facing the church and please remain in your vehicle. We thank you for your prayers and financial support during this time. Please continue using your donation envelopes and mailing them or dropping them off in the parish office. We encourage you to think about donations online. It is easy to do. You may use the link for online giving on the parish website. The intentions for this Mass is for Lorenzo Burham, Jr., deceased. Buenos días, y bienvenido a la parroquia de Santa Catalina y a nuestra celebración eucarística del sexto domingo de Pascua. Presidirá nuestra celebración hoy Padre Pat Grile, Está siendo asistido en el altar por diácono Flavio Sánchez. Nuestro párroco, Padre Lamar, escuchará confesiones en el estacionamiento los sábados de 9 a 11 de la mañana. Simplemente conduzca con el lado del conductor frente a la iglesia. Por favor, permanezca en su vehículo. Les agradecemos por mantener a nuestra comunidad parroquial en sus oraciones y por su apoyo financiero. Por favor, continúe usando las donaciones, los sobres para sus donaciones, enviándolos por correo o dejándolos en la oficina de la parroquia. Le recomendamos que piense en hacer donaciones en línea. Es fácil de hacerlo. Puede usar el enlace para donaciones en el sitio web de la parroquia. La intención de esta misa de hoy es por Lorenzo Barumen, Jr. everybody on this beautiful Sunday, May 17th. We come here to celebrate God's wonderful love. You may be at home by yourself, maybe you have other family members with you, but we are all gathered together in the wonderful love of God that surrounds us. So as we begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and the peace of our loving God, the deep joy of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's praise our God, as always, for the very precious gift of life, for the faith that has brought us here this morning. Let's ask the Lord to forgive any of our sins and our failures. Lord Jesus, 
You suffered for our sins and opened the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, no, Señor Jesús, tú fuiste entregado a la muerte para redimirnos del poder del pecado y la muerte. Cristo, ten piedad. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, living with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing for unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice, he came out of many possessed people and paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river he passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Now hear, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy.
Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro. Hermanos, veneren en sus corazones a Cristo, el Señor, dispuestos siempre a dar al que las pidiere las razones de la esperanza de ustedes. Pero háganlo con sencillez y respeto y estando en paz con su conciencia. Así quedarán avergonzados los que denigran la conducta cristiana de ustedes. Pues mejor es padecer haciendo el bien, si tal es la voluntad de Dios, que padecer haciendo el mal. Porque también Cristo murió una sola vez y para siempre por los pecados de los hombres. Él, el justo por nosotros, los injustos para llevarnos a Dios, murió en su cuerpo y resucitó glorioso. Palabra de Dios. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Lord, to you, o Lord. Lord, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him, But you know him because you because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and in you will live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us in our gospel today that he is going to the Father, but he will not leave us orphans, that he and the Father and the Spirit remain with us. They dwell within, within us. And I like to kind of help us understand this a little bit and the idea that we know all of us probably have lost loved ones and they have gone to the other side of life. And perhaps reflecting on how we remember those who have died will help us understand Jesus leaving, but how he is still with us. 
When we remember our loved ones who have died, what do we want to do? We want to honor them. We want to take something of the beauty of the goodness of their lives and really make it a part of our own. In a sense, what we do is we allow their spirit to live in us and through us. And that way, they are not forgotten. Yes, we need to let go. We need to keep moving and living. We grieve their loss and their death and their absence. And that can be a very lonely and a very painful experience. Because what happens? We can't go up and put our arms around them, can we? We can't laugh with them. We can't cry with them. We can't struggle with them, hug them, love them, do all the things we did over these many years. When they die and leave this world, yes, physically, that is taken away from us. And we mourn, and we grieve, and we miss those very special moments. But their spirit, their soul still is with us, lives within us. We don't stop loving them because they have died, and they don't stop loving us. Death cannot take away that from us. And so we remember them. And isn't it true? Sometimes in a remembering, you may go someplace where you were with a loved one, and you tell a story, you share a memory, you look at a picture, and perhaps tears will come to your eyes. At other moments, perhaps, you'll laugh and say, oh, yeah, remember when we did this? And that joy will come there. And then there's times in between where you're just, you're so silent. You feel so alone and empty. It's kind of like some days we fly high like an eagle, right? <laughs> other days we don't even get off the ground. But it is in the remembering that their soul and their spirit are present with us and in us. And Jesus knew that he was going away too, physically leaving us and the disciples. But he would not leave us orphans. Jesus' departure through death, you know, is not a loss, but really what it becomes is a different form of presence in our lives. Jesus tells them and us that he would be with us always in a new way. He's introducing to us that transition from being with us to dwelling within us. Jesus invites you and me to share his experience of union that he has with the Father through our union with him. You and I become this dwelling place of God here on earth. As Jesus says, I'm in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. How powerful that is. How could we have missed that all these years that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are living within us? What that means, folks, is that when you and I act out of love of Christ, the more deeply we experience that love. The love I have for you is God's own love for you. The Christ in me loves the Christ in you. When we look upon the face of another, we're looking at the face of Christ. So that's why Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. To love one another as I have loved you unconditionally, no strings attached. I'd like to share with you a beautiful story about a woman whose name was Toni Bosco. She was a great author and a writer. She just died this past March 21st at the age of 91. She had seven children. She did a lot of writing, and one of the great things that she wrote about was trying to get away from people having the death penalty in our country. And that was born out of the experience of her own life and family. She had seven children. One of them committed suicide at the age of 27. And it devastated her and her remaining children. And they struggled to try to make meaning and sense of this. Why would this man at 27 years of age decide that he no longer wanted to be in this world? His despair, his limitations, just everything had vanished. 
And she was struggling through that, trying to handle this death of her son. And two years later, a phone call came, and it was a police officer calling from Montana and said, are you Tony Vasco? Do you have a son living here in Montana? She said, yes, yes. Well, I need to tell you that there's been another death. A young man had broken into the house of her son and his wife. And he was robbing the house, and he came upstairs in the bedroom and saw him there, and he shot them both lying in bed. Here's Tony again, experiencing a death of another child and her daughter-in-law. And the anger, the hurt, the pain, all those feelings were there and how her family was suffering. And she found herself, you know, how do I handle this? What's going to go on? And finally, she began that the healing, she said, began to take place. When I asked the government that the young man who killed her son and daughter-in-law would not be executed. I could say, yes, he must be punished for taking this life. But I would not say, kill this killer. She says, in that moment, I learned to see that to say no to forgiveness would have been gouging Christ out of my life. And from that resulting emptiness of soul, I would have nothing left to give anybody else. And I quote her when she says this, to forgive is just what the world itself, the word itself says, to offer a gift before it has been earned or even deserved. It doesn't mean giving in, it means letting go. If we don't forgive, we stay emotionally handcuffed to the person or the nation or the people that hurt us. And if we're handcuffed, we are not free, never at peace, never able to do God's work. Forgiveness is a boomerang. The gift that you and I send out is what we're going to get back. And she said, this is how God treats us when we forgive, we act as God does. There it is. She captured it perfectly. When we forgive, we act as God does. Loving and forgiving like Jesus because we already have God's love and forgiveness inside of us. She said, I was buoyed by the grace of God. I found my answer. It is not to want more death. It is to celebrate life. Life is a gift, a gift from a very gracious and loving God. We didn't earn it. And Jesus' departure, as he reminds us in that gospel, it's necessary because then he would be able to come back and be within us and on that day, I invite you and me to share that fullness of eternal life. So that's why we mourn and grieve the death of our loved ones. We remember them, knowing that one day we will see them again in the wonderful embrace of eternity. And one day then, too, we shall see that risen Lord in the fullness of his resurrection. But in the meantime, you and I, are the presence of Jesus in our world today by the love that we give to every person we meet, to love one another as God loves us unconditionally, no strings attached. And certainly, in these uncertain times of the pandemic, we need one another more than ever. We belong to one another. Death does not have the victory we have the resurrection of Jesus' love dwelling within us already. Someone once said, uh, when he was asked if he feared death, and he said it this way, we are all brought into this life because heaven loves us. And back to that love we go. I want to leave you with another image. I, I kind of like this. It seems to make a little more sense to me, too. Um, I image the father 
the Son, and the Spirit, and an eternal love dance, an eternal love dance. You know, they're, they're in that circle. They got their arms and hands joined together, and they're just having a great ball, enjoying their love that flows between the three of them. And what are they doing? The Father, the Son, and the Spirit are inviting you and me to dance with them because they dwell and they live within us. Are your feet tapping yet? In our profession of faith, we believe in one God, Father, Lord, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible, and of all souls, Lord, the Virgin Mary, Lord, the Father, before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With great confidence and trust, we ask God to hear our prayers for today. We pray for the church that, like the early disciples, we will proclaim the Christ to others, revealing the movement of the Holy Spirit through our words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Oremos por los que ocupan cargos públicos para que respondan con su asistencia y compasión a las situaciones y asuntos difíciles que confrontan. Roguemos al Señor. We pray that we may carry Christ in our hearts, willing to suffer for doing good in the world today. We pray to the Lord. Oremos por aquellas personas que tienen dificultad en discernir su propio propósito y llamado para que lo reconozcan, la inspiración del Espíritu Santo en su vida, roguemos al Señor. Señor, escucha nuestra oración. We pray for all who have died, particularly those who have had coronavirus, that they live forever in the peace and joy of God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oremos por el descanso del alma de Lorenzo Berumen, Jr., por nuestros militares y sus familias, los nombres en nuestra lista de oraciones, las peticiones de nuestra canasta de oración, por nuestros seres queridos que han pasado a una nueva vida, Y las intenciones que mantenemos en el silencio de nuestro corazón, roguemos al Señor. Señor, escucha nuestra oración. For the intentions of this Mass, we pray in memory of Don Simsky, Morgan Gunderson, Greg Lusick, for Veronica 
Jeffer, birthday, birthday, and for the intention of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And loving God, hear all of these prayers you've spoken to those that are deep in our hearts. As always, we ask you to fill us up once again with that gentleness, with that peace, that hope, that joy, that compassion of your Son, Jesus. We know that you live within us. May your dwelling within us help us to let you love through us to touch the hearts and lives of others each day. Bring us closer to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread and wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food and a drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away our iniquity, cleanse us from all of our sins. Pray that the offerings of ourselves and our gifts will be accepted by our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands. Praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all this holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord, with Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you, yet more gloriously, when... Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And so overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. We join with all the heavenly hosts as together we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, but are anchored to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We continue praying in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has said to all of us, your apostles, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May our Lord's peace be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. And Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And we know we believe that this Jesus, our Redeemer, who comes to live within you and me, and to always be with us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I am worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. May the body of Christ bring us to life everlasting.
And let us make our spiritual communion together. My Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oración de Comunión Espiritual de San Alfonso Ligori. Mi Jesús, creo que estás presente en el Santísimo Sacramento. Te amo por encima de todas las cosas y deseo recibirte en mi alma. Como ahora no puedo recibirte sacramentalmente, entro al menos espiritualmente en mi corazón. Te abrazo como si tú estuvieras ahí y me uno completamente a ti. Nunca permitas que me separe de ti. Amén. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life, in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because this is the beautiful month of May, we will also have a crowning of Mary's a statue here. So I'm going to have the final blessing, then we'll have the May crowning, and then our concluding hymn for our Mass will be a Marian hymn as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our Lady, whose glory we proclaim today, was the humble servant of the Lord when she was on earth. She gave herself utterly to her son and his work. With him and under him, she wants an instrument in our redemption. And now in the glory of heaven, she is still the God-bearer to Christ's brothers and sisters. She cares about their eternal salvation. She is minister of the holiness and queen of love. And so we present this crown of flowers to Mother Mary as a sign of our love and devotion. O oh God, since you have given us Mary, the mother of your son, to be our mother and queen, grant that we, who are here to crown her image, may attain the glory of all your children in the kingdom of heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hope you all have a very beautiful Sunday. Celebrate God's wonderful love for you and for your family and friends. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed fruit of your Just wisdom.
Love. 